So good evening and welcome to this online even song from UNIV. Even if we listen at home by ourselves, let us remember that we join with others whom we may not see, for we know that they are listening too. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Therefore let us continue in a moment of shared silence and remember God's presence with us now. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speech to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost.
first lesson is from the book of Genesis. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. For the rain from the heavens was restrained and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to abate until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains appeared. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it, and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening. And there, in its beak, was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his son's wives, and every animal, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out of the ark by families. Here ends the first lesson. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him, throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. 
He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembering his mercy hath all been his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. The second lesson is from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the place where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you this whole time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and, in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, in my name, you ask me for anything, I will do it. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, no.
upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light on our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading this week carries on a story from last week. Last week, in the reading from Genesis, we heard about how Noah and his wife and his three sons and his three sons' wives and a representative selection of animals all got into the ark to be kept safe from the flood. And this week we heard about how the flood water has subsided and they all get out again. The lectionary has condensed things for us. In the story in Genesis, they stay in the ark for 40 days and 40 nights of rain, and it takes 150 days for the waters to go down far enough for them to think of disembarking. It is only seven days since last Sunday, although under lockdown conditions it may have felt to you like 40 days, or 150 days, and possibly they had the same problem on the ark. We don't know how they passed the time aboard. The story does not tell us that. The story is interested in getting them aboard and then getting them off again. And those are moments when the people in the story need to trust. Those are moments of trust in the story. Noah has to trust God, who has told him to build the ark in the first place. He has had to hang on to that trust in spite of his neighbours, who think that a man building a boat in his back garden looks a bit of an idiot. Now, at the point in the story we have reached, they have to be able to trust that it is safe to leave the ark and get back outside. And they're not sure if it's going to be safe. And they carry out a series of tests. We noticed last week that there are parallels between our present situation and this story of the ark. And here is another parallel. How can we get out? How can we get out of lockdown? Will it be safe? What tests should we carry out? And by the time you are listening to this, you may know what the UK government has announced about how what we think about how to get out of the lockdown so far. I don't know that yet. I don't know what equivalents there will be in terms of modern technology to sending out a raven and sending out a dove. And I hear about the people in the art debating that, what the raven shows and what the dove shows. And I wonder what will the contact tracing app on my phone show? These are questions of trust. How can we know the way? And there I have jumped readings. How can we know the way? How will we find the way? Is a question from the second reading. It's what Thomas asks Jesus. It's a good question. Jesus has just said, well, you know where I'm going. And Thomas says, no, we don't. So how can we know the way? The way it happens is one of the very earliest names for the followers of Jesus. This is after Thomas asks his question, but not long after. In the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 9, they are being talked about as the people who belong to the way. And later in Acts, Luke talks about instructing people in the way, about the way of the Lord, about disputes that break out concerning the way. It's called the way long before it's called the church, long before it has any kind of architectural focus. A church building or a chapel or a kitchen table or your laptop. We are discussing, now we're not in church buildings, what the church is. And it's good, I think, to be reminded that it's a way. It's not a place. It's a way. It seems quite likely that the followers of Jesus began to be called the way at least partly because of the answer that Thomas gets to his question. How can we know the way? Well, says Jesus in reply, you know me. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. The answer is about trust. The question was about trust. How can we know? Is it safe yet? Has the raven come back? Has anyone seen the dove? How can we trust? 
And in both cases, in these Bible stories, we don't get an answer about how can we trust, but about who. Who can we trust? God does not offer us an infallible system for living so that we can trust that. God offers us, in a risky world, God's love that is with us in the darkest places and the roughest times on the ark and the most difficult times for the disciples. The love of a God we can trust. The only way to know that way is to walk it. The only answer is who, not how. Not the system, but the person. So we walk the way. We trust God and we set out on the journey together. We walk in God's way with the other people of the way, learning how to find the way, learning to keep going, learning what strengthens us and nourishes us and gives us light in the dark. Jesus says to his friends who have walked with him that he is the way. If they can trust him, they can follow the way. And the story of Noah will continue. Now that they're back on dry land, when God offers Noah a sign of trust, which is yet another parallel for our times. But for what that is, you are going to have to wait for next week. Amen. As we continue together, 
let us pray. God of compassion, in this time of pandemic, disruption and uncertainty, we pray for your world and for all people. Give courage and understanding to those in positions of authority and influence, that they may speak and act in ways that are wise and fair, and that they may work for the common good. Strengthen and sustain all those who are ill, afraid or in isolation, and comfort and uphold all those who mourn. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. In their grief, be present with them. Give protection and resilience, compassion and skill, and the equipment that they need to all who care for the sick and for the dying, and all who perform other vital rules, and bring them safely home each day. Give wisdom and illumination, and the resources and data that they need to researchers and clinicians searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work a vaccine may be found, that this virus may be contained, and that we may emerge from lockdown able and resolved to work for a fairer and better world. Through him who suffered on the cross, and whom you raised to reign with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to prayers for trust. Almighty God, who in thy wisdom has so ordered our earthly life that we needs must walk by faith and not by sight, grant us such faith in thee that amidst all things that pass our understanding we may believe in thy loving care and ever be strengthened by the assurance that underneath are thy everlasting arms. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God and Father, help us to entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. And a prayer of St John Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and us promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.